Watch my face. <laughs> hello there, Evie here. Welcome to what we're calling Dust vs. Thermals. Now, this is my friend Joe. Say hello, Joe. Hello. Uh, this is his computer. Um, you may have seen Linus Tech Tips did a video on a one year dust um, sort of build up test where they had three systems running with different configurations. Uh, the one thing that I felt when looking at that video is that there was no thermal test to see which one of them performed uh, better or worse, had higher temperatures or not. So, We've got Joe's system. Joe's system has now not been cleaned for how long, do you say? Before I had a GTX 1070. When did that? Oh, you bought that when they came out, didn't it? Yeah. It Whenever was, that was. It was like the week it came out. Okay, we'll have a little like thing up here sending you when that was. So this hasn't been cleaned since then. Now, we're going to show you some panning shots of the system. Um, there are parts of dust that are built up as thick as filters. So. Uh, I don't know if that's a filtration device or system that is I'm naturally sure it built up. It does something. Um, but anyway, so we're going to be doing a test. First test we're going to do is we're going to stick the side panels on. Oh yeah, you may have noticed that it's st sitting on wood. Uh, why was that? Why is it sitting on wood? I, uh, I broke the, uh, the one of the feet off okay. and uh, instead of putting it back on. I had some wood laying around and I was like... Well, the power supply unit is <laughs> is suspended, so I suppose it's still getting air from below somehow. Um, that was my fear, because it sits on carpet. I didn't want the power supply to be drawing from carpet. Yeah, you wouldn't so want I it thought, to get hot and set on fire. So. I'll stick a block of wood in yeah. it instead. Yeah, all the dust isn't a problem, <laughs> but all that is. I just like to see inside that as well to see what's what, but I don't think we're going to be opening that up. Uh, so yeah, my particular favourites of the dust build-ups are the front fan, uh, the top fan, very funny, uh, and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, which actually we'll do a comparison <laughs> shot between my Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo and what this one looks like, and it is uh, it's quite a sight. Anyway, first test we're going to do is we're going to stick all the side panels on, which Joe hasn't put on, and there's also dust building up on those from just they've been sitting on the side building dust. Uh, we're going to put the side panels back on, everything's going to be enclosed, and we're going to run it through the normal test that we do for the Micro ATX test on this channel, which will be Prime95 small F FTS test, and will be the uh, combustor test uh, from MSI. So, um, what we'll put the specs here of the system. Um, any idea of what you're running at the moment? What's the... Uh, i7-4770K, okay. 16 gig of... I want to say Corsair Vengeance. <laughs> Something. <laughs> I saw I saw Dominator in there. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know Vengeance? No, you're right. You're uh, Vengeance. I thought so. <laughs> uh, GTX 1070 MSI one. Yeah. Um, and then a Corsair RM850. Okay, and the case is? Cooler Master something. <laughs> I'm sure there was a label on it somewhere. <laughs> Oh, but I don't know what I mean. yeah, it's we quite an old case. Yeah, we established it's not a half X because I had to borrow one of those for um, a short period of time before. Anyway, before we go on way too much, we're going to stick the side panels on, do the first test, and we'll see what it's like. Uh, also, admire Joe's uh, particular style of storing uh, two and a half inch drives, which is... Are they two and a half inches at the back? They're, just... They're all two and a half inch. They've all come out of laptops at some stage. Okay. I need 70 gig. I'll just check that in. And do any of them have <laughs> screws? The three and a half inch one is hasn't got screws. I don't think it's just in the quick drive. Slot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then otherwise, no. No screws. Then, no screws. No screws. So before anybody whinges, this has been sitting here for probably at least three years. Yeah, he's doing been. this uh, this in this configuration, and he drove it over here in his car. And you have done many trips in there before, yeah. like that. So please, nobody whinge about not having screws in hard drives. Really, it doesn't matter that much. But ideally, yes, you should have some, at least one. Or two. Nah, it's all fine. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's do the first test. We're going to do it as Joe would have it on the blocks <laughs> and the side panels on. So yeah, catch you in a second for those. Just before we head into the thermal testing, there's a few extras that haven't been covered yet. The graphics card has been hit with the odd cobweb here and there, but this is uh, this is far from the worst of them. And on top is a lovely fine layer of dust attempting to disguise the black backplate of the card. The rear fan, which is acting as an intake, isn't optimal, but then again, neither are the peaks of dust built up on the edges of the blades. Believe it or not, the top of the case is actually an exhaust, and you'd be mistaken for thinking it was filtered, but this wouldn't make sense since it's an exhaust. Either way, there's no filter here, it's all dust bridging the hexagonal holes. There's a fine layer of dust on everything in this case, even the power cables to the motherboard and graphics card haven't been left unscathed. As for the side panel, there's dust all over this too, and all sorts of dirt in the crevice at the bottom. Moving on to the other side panel, have you ever seen one of those archaeological programs where they dig up some sort of Roman barracks and date it back based on the compound of the pot? Well, here at AV Techie we don't have the technology to do such a thing, but we have got a Snickers wrapper that was trapped in the side panel that dates back to the 8th of the 5th 2016. 
At this point, we had to power the system on to set up the tables and programs for benchmarking. And as we powered the system on, the large 200mm fan at the top of the case started shedding its dust. You can spot it if you look towards the left or at the orange curtain in the background. Inside the top of the case shows more of the story. There's all sorts of dust sat on the fan blades, which you saw earlier, but the top of the case has masses of cobwebs which will need cleaning out for further testing. Okay, so first test we're doing just all dust, side panels off. This is Joe's sort of everyday configuration for, I don't know, cooling. So yeah, all panels are off or all side panels are off and then it's just all the dust as standard. So we're gonna track this. At the end, we're gonna compare all the results. You might actually be able to see bits of um, dust flying around places. So anyway, hope you enjoy the results and catch you in a second. See you in a bit. Just flying around. We're just getting sucked, going shooting out and sitting sucked right back into the thing. This is good airflow. Nah, <laughs> it means you can see where the airflow is going. That's it. Look how hot that CPU is. Test number two. All panels on and still plenty of dust. Uh, we haven't hooked up the the large fan here, the 200 mil fan, just because it's gonna interfere with the results. So everything is basically standard. Um, things to potentially expect from this is that we have uh, stronger airflow through the system potentially, but then again, there was more open area for air to get through with the panels off. But we'll see in the results whether this changes things. One thing I wanted to mention before, um, earlier, uh, these tests uh, are, be done with, or are being done with a fan curve on the CPU, uh, but there isn't really a fan curve um, designated to any of the other fans, so uh, and the GPU, but it's all running on the same fan curve. So if we hit results that are say hotter in this test than the previous one, then we can expect that it's a sort of logarithmic um, scale of, of temperatures and the thermals. So uh, if it is either cooler or hotter, then it's exponentially cooler or hotter. But uh, anyway, test two, panels on, all dust. Explain what just happened. So, my hypothesis so far has been correct. Having the panels on makes your PC indeed hotter. <laughs> Therefore, run your PC without any panels. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we found out, I'm just sitting by the camera by the way, uh, what we found out then is that the uh, thermal throttling happened earlier on core two, uh, this time round with this second test with the panels on than it did with uh, the panels off. So having some sort of linear airflow going through the case doesn't actually seem to uh, hold much water at the moment. So yeah, um, Joe's theory is that, and I'm kind of inclined to agree with him, is that we're not really going to see much difference in temperatures. That's cool one. That's cool one. Like four minutes, 54 seconds. Four, then that is sooner. So, so yeah, so basically the general theory we think is that uh, with all the dust removed, maybe, I'm thinking something in the region of 5 to 10 degrees, maybe. That's going to be a post. It's optimistic, that is. <laughs> Joe's thinking more like 2, which 2 yeah. would be within the region of um, error. Anyway, that's just our thoughts. So, interesting, we're looking at a hot result, but we'll see what it's like at the end. So with all the testing out of the way, we're going to use our Dyson DC35 to clean the system. Uh, Joe is going to make sure that he's wearing his anti-static wrist strap from courtesy of iFixit. From iFixit, absolutely. Uh, and we'll just tidy it up. Um, take it away, Joe. Make sure your anti-static strap is uh, connected to your trousers, <laughs> and unscrew the thumb screw. Your PC is perfectly fine to be on at this point.
Okay, I'm super exposed or overexposed here, but we've done the whole cleanup. We're now doing the next test, which is no, no panels on, just a full clean build, and then we're gonna put the panels on afterwards and rerun the test and see what it does. Um, again, Joe's thinking between one and five degrees, I'm saying one to 10 degrees. That's kind of based on uh, on the open air test bench with the Hyper 212 Evo on the 6700K. Uh, we actually got to under 70 degrees, whether uh, as with this rig with all the dust in there with the same cooler and a 90 or 84 watt CPU, I think it is, um, it was completely thermal throttling and was causing problems. So it'll be interesting to see what it turns out like, but again, we'll see with the results at the end. Remember that time when we changed a, um, I think it was your PS3's hot right? Mm -hmm. And now uh, we have the right security bit to it. So we drilled it out in the middle. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I know, I know. Those people. Yeah, that's not the end of this test, thanks. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> it, honestly, it kills me. The worst one is when it's like, oh, my Ryzen 6700 is, you know, cooler so much that, yeah. cooler than that. It's like, okay, well, you got a different cooler, so whether it's bare or not is a different thing. Uh, and it's a freaking 65 watt processor. <laughs> oh, my iPhone overclocked mine. I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, it, you're starting at 65, right? You, the start is there, and it's like, oh, it goes up to 120, and it's like, yeah, well, this one's going to 125, you know? Base start is more power, and, you know, yeah. hasn't got the same cooling system as you. It makes a difference anyway. Okay, so interesting results from that test, and I'm not going to show you the results quite yet. We're going to do the side panel on, both side panels uh, back on. We're going to do that test next, and then we will show all of the results side by side, uh, and... You'll see what they're like then. It's um, interesting though, and I think I'll leave it at that. So uh, yeah, catch you in a second. So here we have the final results. All temperatures are in degrees Celsius in a Delta T format, and the rest of the information is on the page. You've probably already noticed what happened. In terms of CPU temperatures, we're looking at a 20 degrees Celsius drop, whichever way you look at it. Clearly that clogged up Hyper 212 Evo was really struggling for air, and no surprise considering how much dust was built up between the fins. In terms of GPU temperature improvements, there wasn't a huge improvement in thermals, but since the GPU fins were oriented vertically and the fans were blowing upwards, there was far less dust gathered in the fin stack, which of course leads through to a lower temperature difference. A question someone might ask is, why did we bother to test with and without the side panels? Well, I was interested in finding out whether having a system full of dust could be compensated for by completely removing the side panels. And it turns out that in at least this case, there was a 9% drop in thermals from the GPU with a case full of dust, and a 4% drop in thermals in the case void of dust. For the GPU, removing the side panels might buy you some more time between cleaning a system, but for the CPU, there's clearly no amount of side panel compensation that's going to combat 3 years of dust buildup. As for the clock speed, we tracked the CPU clock speed, which struggled the most in this testing with thermals, but it would have been nice to track the GPU clock speed too. With both full dust test systems, the CPU hit 100 degrees Celsius, but the no panel variant managed to postpone this by over a minute. But I think any more discussion into these graphs is pointless. The take home from this is you should keep on top of the dust in your system if you're interested in maintaining decent thermals, which can have an impact on performance and longevity of the system components. So, 20 degrees difference essentially on the CPU and about 7 degrees difference uh, total between dust and no dust. I think the camera slightly tilted actually. Anyway, um, yeah, it was just absolutely blew us away. I, I, was, I did think logically when we were doing the uh, swap over and doing the cleanup that due to the test bench um, thermal results I had for the Hyper 212 Evo that I did a review on, you can check in the top right hand corner, which is actually... it is there. Yeah, okay, it is that way. I was trying to look that. Um, but yeah, you can check that in the top right corner and check that review out. But I was thinking there with the uh, 6700K, it was about 67 degrees or something. Yeah. Uh, and here was a little bit hotter and there's lots of different variables that can go down to that. 
But yeah, absolutely fantastic results. So if you've got an extremely dusty system and you're thinking, oh, what can it really do? I think the only result is, is clean it out. Uh, one thing I do want to mention actually is this. Is this. Uh, this is a blower that I bought uh, from uh, from a company in the UK. But it's essentially just um, some motor with a sort of impeller or whatever, a propeller essentially. Um, and just blows like hell. It's like something like a 50 watt motor in there. Um, that did the majority of the work. The handheld uh, vacuum clean up there and even the uh, the standstill one or the, the one that you plug into the wall was sort of yeah, okay. okay. Great. Yeah, it did a good job of containing the dust, but I mean this, you know, like you saw a bit of uh, footage in there. That was really the beans. And that really, if you're going to be doing a lot of computer stuff, that prevents you buying compressed air. And you'll probably go through maybe uh, 9 to 12 bottles of compressed air for the cost of one of those. So that is potentially an investment for you if you want to look into that sort of thing. So thank you very much for watching the video. I found it very educational. I thought it was really impressive. Uh, we were thinking between 1 and 10 degrees. <laughs> We were wrong, um, but yeah, logically, completely makes sense. So thanks for watching the video, and we'll hopefully catch you in the next one. We are actually planning to collaborate, although Joe doesn't have a channel of his own, <laughs> <laughs> uh, by going up something like going up Penavan or something, which is a massive mountain near us, um, to go and build a computer up there. But we're gonna have to check out the sort of legal issues between taking lots of computer hardware up there and just building stuff up there. I don't know about that. So yeah. Anyway. Just to prove. That computers are actually pretty hardy. Like, yeah, computer... you don't have to like touch them with like eleven care. Right? Yeah, exactly. Usually, like, chucking around, they don't matter. Like... Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we did have we did have a potential issue where we were trying to reboot the system afterwards and it wouldn't boot. But that was essentially because the RAM sticks were there. Must have been some sort of dust uh, on one of the contacts of the RAM sticks, and it was just causing uh, a constant hard reboot constantly. But um, but yeah, computers are not. You don't have to touch them with kid gloves they're actually pretty solid and you can tell that by pretty much anybody on a computer channel just handling it like as if you were handling this I mean, they throw them around all the time anyway before we go on too long thanks for checking out the video thank you so much for um giving us your computer and your, your dirty <laughs> computer for this uh for this uh video joe and we will catch you in a video probably not very soon but in another one laters bye bye awesome Ha <laughs> ha!